Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's North Carolina Botanical Garden Lunchbox Talk. I'm very excited to bring you Emily Callicut, who's a land protection specialist with Three Rivers Land Trust. And she's going to share about a very special place in the Uwari National Forest. So I'm Joanna Lalikas. I'm the Director of Education here at the North Carolina Botanical Garden. And I also have with me, uh, sharing the moderation, David Michaud. He's our Registrar and Program Coordinator. And he'll be available to moderate the questions at the end of Emily's talk. Uh, I really want to highlight our partnership with the Friends of Plant Conservation. Uh, we partner, we've been partnering with them for a few years on paired lunchbox talks and excursions. And this is one of those talks. I'd like to take a moment to thank Tom Keenan for serving as a fall 2022 lunchbox talk event host at the Longleaf level. We're so appreciative for Tom's uh, contributions to support program planning, accessibility, and the reach of our lunchbox talks. And I'd like to introduce our special guest today, Emily Calicut, again, working as the Lands Protection Specialist for Three Rivers Land Trust in February of 2021. She attended North Carolina State University where she graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Fisheries, Wildlife and Conservation Biology in the spring of 2020. Her studies included ornithology, herpetology and field work throughout North Carolina. And she's also a certified associate wildlife biologist. Before coming to the Land Trust, she worked on wildlife management projects for private companies and managed the hunting program on a wildlife refuge. As a Montgomery County native, Emily is passionate about conserving the natural land she's been able to enjoy in the region. And in her spare time, she's an avid birder and also enjoys hiking, paddling, and baking. So Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to share a little bit about the work that the Land Trust has been able to do in the URIs. And let me get my screen shared. All right. So I want to start off just by giving a little bit of a background about who we are at Three Rivers Land Trust and what we do. So we're a private nonprofit organization that works with landowners and our mission is to conserve and protect the natural areas, family farms, rural landscapes and historic places in the Piedmont and Sand Hills of North Carolina. We have a 15 county service area kind of from Statesville all the way down to Fayetteville. We merged with the Sand Hills Area Land Trust in 2019. And so we were able to pick up those Sand Hills counties with that merger and we're excited to kind of expand our work into those areas. We're a small nonprofit, we have about 10 full-time staff, but we like to say that we're small and mighty, we get a lot accomplished. And something that I think really sums up the work that we do at the Land Trust is best brought forward in this quote from John Sawhill, who's the late president of the Nature Conservancy, that in the end, our society will be defined not by what we create, but what we refuse to destroy. And for us at Three Rivers Land Trust, that means that we're protecting the biodiversity of the areas we work in. We're ensuring that the people in our area have access to clean water through riparian buffers and clean air through the forests that we protect. We want to ensure everyone has access to recreation, cultural and historic resources. We also do a lot of work in farmland preservation to make sure that these local farmers can continue to provide the food and the food and fiber that is so important to the communities and that everyone has access to open space for just general quality of life. A kind of a brief history of us, we were formed in 1995 and came out of the Yadkin PD Lakes project, and we were able to get our 501c3 status in 1995 and protect our first property in Davidson County. And from then, it has just kind of been full steam ahead. We really started our focus in the URIs in about 2002. We had a field office there at one point, and we have just kind of really had that as a focal area ever since. In 2006, we were able to acquire a 1200 acre preserve that has now grown to a little over 1400 acres now called the Low Water Bridge Preserve in the heart of the URIs. And we are really proud to have gotten our national accreditation in 2014. And then 
like I said, we merged with the Sand Hills Area Land Trust in 2019 and adopted the name Three Rivers Land Trust. We were formerly known as the Land Trust for Central North Carolina. And to date, we've protected a little over 45,000 acres and that number grows every day. We're really proud of our conservation record. So like I said, a little over 45,000 acres protected since 1995. 17,000 acres of that is farmland conservation, a little over 300 miles of stream and river frontage, and over 8,000 acres that have been transferred to the public for recreation. And we're really proud of that number. We think that is something that's really important for our state. And one really exciting thing kind of coming down the line is we have a 215 acre property that we were able to acquire last year adjacent to Mar Mountain State Park, and that will transfer to the park by the end of this year. So that's something we're very, very excited about to be expanding the local state parks in our area. We accomplish these conservation goals through a variety of different paths. So we have donated conservation easements where the landowner donates the development rights to the land trust and there are tax benefits associated with that. In some cases, we can use state and federal grant funding to purchase the conservation easement. And we also accept donations and purchase the fee simple interest in property. And then we also assist state and federal agencies with acquisitions. Conservation easements are pretty variable. So we have forever wild easements, which are pretty hands off and no touch. We have farmland protection easements, which ensure that land is able to stay in agricultural production. The former ecosystem enhancement program was designed to help protect and buffer important water resources throughout the state. And then our typical donated easements can really vary depending on the needs of the landowners. So they can lean more towards the forever wild easements that are no touch hands off or allow for some agriculture and really just kind of work to fit the needs and the goals of the landowner that we're working with. So a conservation easement is an agreement between the landowner and the land trust that in which the landowner promises to keep the land in its natural state and follow the terms of the conservation easement and the land trust has the right to enforce the terms of that easement. So we monitor all of our easement properties annually to make sure that the easement language is being upheld. There is a variety of funding that is available to do this conservation work. Probably the three biggest ones for us are the North Carolina Land and Water Fund, which help protect water resources and natural areas across the state. And then the department of agricultural at the state level and the federal level provide funding for farmland protection. There's also some funding available from the Forest Service, the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Department of Justice, and then also private foundations such as the Cannon Foundation and Inviva. So I think this brings us to our first poll question, which is what are the URIs? And so where are the URI National Forests located? the Piedmont of North Carolina or the Sand Hills. And while that's going, just a brief background is the Uwaris are a mountain range in central North Carolina that are believed to have sprung up from a volcano chain over 500 million years ago. A lot of people refer to it as the oldest mountain chain in North Carolina. I think that's a little bit debated, but we think it sounds nice. So it looks like the majority of people have that correct. The URIs are located in the Piedmont of North Carolina. So pretty centrally located in the state in the majority of the national forest boundaries in Randolph and Montgomery counties. On the map, everything in green is part of the national forest. It's over 50,000 acres and the majority is owned by the Forest Service, kind of the green down to the east in Montgomery County and the most northern parts in Randolph County are owned by the Wildlife Resources Commission as part of the URI game lands. And everything you see in the map in yellow is land that has been protected by the land trust. So a lot of those that fall and overlap with the green are properties that we have transferred to the National Forest and we're really excited that we have two projects that will transfer to the National Forest by the end of the year. So we're doing our best to kind of add on to the URIs and help it grow to fulfill its proclamation boundary.
So why do we care about the URIs? I'm a little biased because I grew up there. So I just think, of course, everybody cares about the URIs. They're one of the most special places I've ever been, but they are one of the most biodiverse areas left in the Piedmont. And it is a big economic driver for Montgomery County. A lot of recreation dollars come into the county because of it. And so it's really important that we protect these areas so that they're there for future generations to enjoy. There are tons of recreational opportunities in the URI as a national forest. You can hike the URI trail. The URI river is a great paddle. There's my mountain biking and horse riding trails. There's areas to go fishing and hunting. And off-roading is kind of the really big recreational draw for the URI. So there are miles of off-roading trails. One thing that's been a focus for the land trust has been the URI trail. When we first started working in that area in the early 2000s, the trail was pretty fragmented and could not be hiked in its entirety. And we've worked over the years to help reconnect that. And we host a backpacking trip twice a year, every spring and fall to get folks out and celebrate the URIs and the URI trail. So if you're interested in backpacking, it's a great way to get involved with us and get involved in the URIs. We like to say that it's the only hike that you'll gain weight on. We feed you <laughs> very, very well. We have wonderful trail angels who make sure everybody is well fed and we provide all your water. So it's a really good backpacking introduction. Before we started working on our reconnection efforts, there were four gaps in public land that prevented the trail from being hiked in its entirety. And we've luckily been able to close all but one of those gaps. And so there is about a three mile road walk in the northern portion of the trail, but we're hopeful to keep working to close that gap so that it can be hiked in its entirety very soon. And throughout the URIs, there are lots of unique and rare species from plants, reptiles, songbirds, migratory waterfowl, amphibians, and unique ecosystems. And we'll kind of talk a little bit about those. So some of the unique migratory waterfowl that we have kind of working clockwise. We have anhinga, yellow crown night heron, tundra swans, and wood stork. And I want to say thanks to Crystal Cockman, our associate director, for all the great pictures. We have mole salamanders, black crown night herons, the scarlet king snake, and the black-throated green warbler. And then a few unique and rare species. So I think this brings us to our next poll question, which is what is the common name of the species? I'll give everybody a minute or two to get that answered. All right, y'all are on it very quick. That is correct. The Georgia aster is the name of this species. This is one of those that are found kind of throughout the Piedmont prairies. Here's our next one, which is what is the common name of this species? All right, it looks like everybody is correct. Again, this is the fire pink, which is found pretty commonly throughout the Uloris. And I believe we have one more poll question for what is the common name of this species? All right, and it looks like everybody got it again. That is the Schweinet sunflower. This is a lot of the protection work in the Uwaris has been centered around the Schweinet sunflower. The land trust is lucky enough to own a few properties that have Schweinet sunflower on them. And it's always exciting to get to see when you're out in the field. All right, and this is another kind of Uwari species, ladies tresses. And one of my personal favorites, the yellow lady slipper. We're lucky enough to have a few of these on our low water bridge preserve. And then one more is the wild white indigo. And so these are all kind of some of the species found throughout the Uwaris that make it unique. Which brings us into kind of why we're all here today, the Long Mountain Slopes property. So this is a 233 acre property that was purchased by the Land Trust in 2004. Funding for this came in part from the North Carolina Land and Water Fund. And it was purchased from the Blair family, who's a pretty prominent family in Montgomery County. So we were thankful to be able to work with them to protect this property. It was placed under a conservation easement 
been transferred to the Plant Conservation Program in 2005, and they own this property. As you can see, it's right adjacent to the Uwari National Forest and really close to the Uwari Trail. The uh, Joe Moffat Trailhead is kind of how you get to Little Long Mountain, which is what this property is located on the slopes of. It's a beautiful view. If you've not ever done any hiking in the Uwaris, I highly recommend going up to the Joe Moffat Trailhead and hiking up to Little Long Mountain. And it is also close to a few other properties that the Land Trust has protected. So the brighter orange is a property that the Land Trust owns. And then the one in the kind of brown color is a project that the Land Trust purchased and transferred to the Wildlife Resources Commission. And here's an aerial map just to kind of give you a better view of the property. It's mostly hardwood forests. And what makes it so unique is all of the natural heritage elements on the property. So two that kind of have unique plant community, communities associated with them are the Piedmont Madadnock Forest and the Piedmont Basic Glade. But there are several other elements located on and around this property. So it was really important that the land trust worked to protect it. And we're thankful that PCP now owns it and stewards this property. There are two species of concern that are found on the property, the mountain camellia and the Piedmont indigo bush pictured here. And the mountain camellia is a large shrub to small tree with these beautiful white blooms in the summer. And it's often found in these acidic bluffs and kind of stream margins that we have on the Long Mountain Preserve property. There's also a few occurrences of it further south, closer to the Jumping Off Rock Trailhead. I was actually able to get to see these in bloom for the first time this summer, so that was really exciting for me. And they are classified by the Natural Heritage Program as significantly rare and a vulnerable status through the Plant Conservation Program. The second species of concern on the property is the Piedmont indigo bush, which is a perennial shrub with a late spring to early summer bloom. It's often found in these rocky woodlands throughout the Piedmont region, like what is found on the Long Mountain Slopes Preserve. And it is also classified as vulnerable through the Plant Conservation Program. So if you would like to get out and see some of these properties and get maybe a glimpse at some of these species, you can join us on November 12th at 10 a.m. for the Paired Field Trip with this lecture. It'll be led by Crystal Cockman, our Associate Director, who is a wealth of knowledge on the URIs and the plants found within them. It is kind of steep terrain, so we just want people to be aware of that heading in. And this is actually the view from Little Long Mountain, which is located really close to the property. Hope, hopefully we'll all get to go get the chance to see this before we leave that day too. And I believe the registration link for this is in the chat. So please join us for that if you are interested. And a few more opportunities to get out and involved in the URIs. If you have any children in your life, we are actually having a youth birding hike this Saturday. We'll have John Gerwin with the, in, or sorry, Brian O'Shea with the Natural Sciences Museum is coming out to help us teach some kids about birding and just getting them out in the outdoors this Saturday. And then November 5th, we are also having a hike at our Poison Fork Forest property in Randolph County. And we would love to have you join us. Registration is free for those events at trlt.org. And I realize I kind of flew through this, so I'm pretty early on my time, but if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Emily. Uh, we had a couple of questions come in already. Uh, first, we had a question on, uh, I think you did touch on this, but were the protected areas of the um, of the Long Mountain Slopes ever connected? Or so, were they all always fragmented? So the Warriors has been pretty fragmented throughout time. And so we're working on kind of rebuilding that conservation network and connectivity through there. But so I believe as part of that transfer, the portion in the lighter orange was bought with that property and we gave PCP what they were interested in and retained what is in the lighter orange. Thank you for that. And we had another question. Um, is Three Rivers actively engaging any local Native American tribes, perhaps the Catawba or I believe the uh, Kalahari are nearby? 
perhaps the, the Lumbee, um, and land conservation or land management activities or decisions. We have not had the opportunity to do that yet. It's something we are certainly interested in if that opportunity arises. Wonderful. And we here at the Garden can, um, can get you connected. Uh, we have a lot of great partnerships with the American Indian Center here on UNC's campus. So we could be in touch. Yeah, as we're kind of expanding further into the Sand Hills region, I think that's something that'll be important. Definitely. That's all I am seeing for questions at this moment. Um, anyone at home, if you have any more, feel free to type those either in the chat or the Q&A. We can kind of bend the rules for this presentation. Yep, and that's my email address too. If anybody wants to kind of connect offline about that, I'd be happy to as well. Fantastic. All right, looks like one more question just came in. Um, could you talk about the geology um, and more about the, the prairie? Yeah, so historically, a lot of the kind of Piedmont of North Carolina was in kind of these open grassland prairies, I think, as you know, fire suppression and the timber needs of the area changed, a lot of those were lost. And so I know there are a lot of organizations kind of doing some work to reclaim those. And that with that, we're getting some of those native species back, which is really exciting. I'm not a ge geology expert, so I can't speak too much on that. That's quite all right. I'm not my wheelhouse either. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any uh, oh. Um, are you aware, um, is, and forgive me if I mispronounce his name, on uh, Dania or Dania Woodell's grave included in the protected slopes area? So it is right adjacent to it. So we'll probably be able to go take a look at that on the field trip on the 12th, but yeah, it is right through there. And a lot of our hikers like to kind of leave flowers and things at her grave as they pass by. And for those who aren't familiar, she is an 11 year old girl that was buried there. And we think maybe there were plans for some kind of larger cemetery in the area, but she's the only grave that has been found in that area. And have any um, Native American artifacts been found in the URIs? That you're yes. aware of <laughs> quite a bit that is kind of the URE and Baden area there's a the Hardaway site is located not too far from here just kind of right over the line into Stanley County and so there are certainly a lot of artifacts found do any come to mind that, that you'd like to share yeah um you know a lot of different arrowheads and things of that nature our executive director is really into that and can kind of speak to it a little more than me, I'd be happy to put anyone who's interested in touch with him. Well, Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. That's um, really great information that you shared. Those, the plants of the URIs are just gorgeous. I look forward to seeing some of those that I was not familiar with someday. And also just wanted to thank everybody for joining us today. And if you're not currently a member of the North Carolina Botanical Garden or the Friends of Plant Conservation, we hope you'll consider becoming a member. Membership is really critical to both of our organization's missions. And I wanna thank you all for attending. We hope to see you at the garden soon. And also great work on those poll questions. That's the first time I've seen 100% participa participation and correctness in those answers, so. Kudos to all of you. <laughs>